What a Religion Has to Say, a comparison of Christendom, Paganism and Thelema. I guess I'm going to make myself incredibly unpopular among some people, but it is something I have to get off my mind for a pretty long time. You see, I always was a religious and a spiritual person. Yes, I know both are not the same. Spirituality is an individual road of discovery, of constant change and challenge. Religion is a more fixed constant you seek for your life. It may also change, but less frequent. I'm not going to judge one is better than the other, because I feel both have their merits and their issues. I'm not going into that topic. The judgment of religion per se is not the topic here. Now, both in Europe and the US, the three influential systems, which are both a spirituality and a religion in the same time, are paganism, Christendom and Thelema. Now, if you ask me personally, I would describe myself as omni-religious. I think in most religions there is some good, some divine truths wrapped in the usual framework of human issues, errors and failures included. There are some religions to which I feel no connection at all, namely, namely Islam, Buddhism and Hinduism. These three are, nothing, are not speaking to me at all. First, I try to define what are paganism, Christendom and Thelema. For each comes in many variants and possible definitions. Selema is a system based on the Book of the Law written down by Aleister Crowley as a holy book, that revealed by a divine entity to be said the new law of the new Ian. In reality, most Selemites today are either in the Ordo Templis Orientis tradition, the Argenteum Astrum tradition, or what you can call freelance Selemites. I always belonged to the latter as far as my Thelema ever went because I didn't feel any particular attraction of the OTO or the AA for various reasons. In my personal opinion, the overall interpretation of the Book of the Law does not differ very fundamentally, at least, at least not among the Thelemites which I ever met. Sure, there are some squabbles of the various verses, but I, if I look at what matters, how Thelemites decide to live in real life, I do not see any vast differences in the practical application of morality. Yes, some are more oriented towards magic, other practice te Thelema more like a conventional church. But what matters to me is the question, how does a group or person apply the idea of, of a religion in the moral compass of everyday life? And here I don't see much difference in how an OTO Thelemite lives his ordinary life or say an AA Thelemite. This goes into really stark contrast to the various groups of Christianity. In the essence you have Protestants, Orthodox, Catholics and then various evangelical groups, most of them based in America. There is plenty to say about them but most have been said and written in great detail. But the real big rift is, as I see it, between Catholic, Orthodox and the Evangelicals on the one hand and Lutheran Protestants on the other. In the Protestant Church is a strong tendency to interpret the Bible, the Holy Book of Christendom, more as a sort of parable or allegory. It emphasizes the need of the individual to see the, the text and behind the text whereas the other three groups are quite adamant to see the Bible as a direct word of God, which must not be interpreted at all, but taken literally every word. There is also another difference. The Protestants and some of the American and Evangelicals tend to give the final say to the individuals, while the Catholic and Orthodox give the priest the full authority over what is the truth. Finally, pagan, paganism can con contain a lot of things, but I will focus in this article on Wicca and what I call restored religions, which are the religions of ancient Europe, on which are people trying to restore or relink themselves to. The most known of these are probably Azatru, the religion of the Norsemen and Germanic tribes, but it also counts to any self-created individual way to restore paganism, like Celtic-based or Indian shamanistic. All three, despite their vast different forms, also have some things in common. Christendom and paganism both have a sort of priests, which underwent some sort of initiations and thus a caste or group of religious experts, while Thelema has none. On the other hand, both Christendom and Thelema have a holy book, while paganism has none. 
Now, for me, the value and use of a religion as opposed to a mere spirituality is that from a religion system, I expect answers in my real life, my everyday life. I like spirituality, and spirituality too gives some answers about life, no doubt. But spirituality is more something you do for yourself. You learn about your inner self, and it is a dominantly inside-looking thing. That is something good and nice, but it tends to isolate you also, which is something I have seen in almost every single practitioner of spirituality, that the longer they walk the path, the more alone they profoundly become. And all honest systems of spirituality make no pretense to hide this fact. On the contrary, most spiritual teachers, books, writings and so forth emphasize how much the path of spirituality often makes you alone. I think it is entirely valid as individual choice to walk such a path, despite the pain it causes. It offers great insight, but it does come at a price. The reality, however, is that a majority of spiritual people chooses to join a religious system as well. For many people I know, paganism or thelema seem the ideal choice because both systems have the benefit to be pro-spiritual, whereas Christendom has some anti-spiritual tendencies, though even Christendom had brought forth some spiritual systems like the Rosicrucian traditions or the system of the magic of Golden Dawn, or within limits of theosophy. Now as I grow older, for me the question which of these systems made more sense does come down more and more to basic and elementary things. You see, when you are 20-something, you are full of idealistic stuff, world-changing visions, and that is nice and all right. But what I question these days is, what do these pathways of religion tell me related to real life? How do these religions give me answers about morality, about politics, about the entire world and its ongoing? I mean, we have today so many issues. We are being spied on, we have climate change, overpopulation, corruption and whatnot. The number and profoundness of these issues of our time seem so strong that a whole lot of people have this feeling to live in an end time. No matter how justified you think that perspective is, the existence of this perspective says a lot about how unhappy many people are about the cause of human societies. But my question these days is, which religion tells me something which a helps me to deal with these issues b helps me to understand what is going on or at least put it into a context and c which one gives me tools to act in the world according to my religion i leave out thelema for the time being and add that later first i go with the question paganism versus christianity now the difference could not be greater christianity is basically a relatively given set since there is a holy book with many written traditions, whereas paganism is extremely flexible and individual. I know most pagans hold the idea of a holy book against Christianity, saying, how can you believe just because it is written in a holy book? And like atheists often say, it is absurd just to believe something only because it is in a book. And there are a lot of books saying a lot of things. But to be blunt, that criticism is absurd, childish and entirely falling short. Yes, if you just grow up in some religious backwater village, entirely isolated from the rest of the world, say in an Amish village, without internet, that may be true, but in the real world we all live in, no Christian of our days grows up like that. I guess no religion is so under fire and constant attack in the last 200 years and present day as Christianity. No matter how justified by the history of the churches that may be, you don't grow up as a Christian these days just believing because it is in a holy book. Like all religion today, your belief is always tested against critique just as much as, as against experience in life. A lot of people today, at least in Europe, if they choose to be or stay Christian, it is not because some priest told them so. Be but because what they hear and read seems to make sense to them. It tells them something about their lives, about the ongoing in the world, and in the essence because they decide the world of the Bible makes sense to them. A modern Christian of today reads the word of Christ in the four Gospels, the Psalms, the Prophets, and so forth, and it either makes sense, it resonates with him in relation to life or not. Faith in the end is always blind to a degree. 
Paganism misinterpreting things just the same, only not it is a, it is not a holy book, but by observing nature and the cosmos, the passing of seasons, the circulation of sun and moon, the ecosystems of rivers, forests, animals, and of course the traditions of their group. That is the holy book of pagans. A Christian is not per se hindered greater to interpret the Bible less individually than a pagan is capable to interpret nature and the concepts of, say, Wicca. That is what Martin Luther brought into Christianity, the freedom of the individual consciousness, the individual way to God, and that influenced to a degree even the Catholic Church and some of the American evangelicals. It is a change the churches can never really turn back anyway. So honestly, I find a critique of pagans to believe something, something just because it, it is in a holy book childish. If you believe in something supernatural, like paganism too, it is not outside the possible realities that some higher being or energy connected itself with a human and inspired by this contact, some sort of text could have been the result. You can only find that entirely impossible if you find religion and spirituality per se absurd if you are an atheist. And even then I would argue, is it even under purely scientific rules unthinkable that incorporeal beings exist which at some point choose to educate humans? Which leads us all back to the basic pagan trauma, the fact that paganism vanished in European history. I know, if you are a pagan, you tend to blame it all on the evil of the Christian priests and preachers tricking the naive pagans of old to convert or converting them by brutal force. Well, to a degree that is certainly true, but to me it also remains a fact that Christendom would never have replaced paganism if by and large it would not have attracted people. What we must face is that at the same time Christendom spread, it was apparently a religion which sad people of the time something, gave them answers on perspective which they no longer seem to find in the gods of rock and wood. We can speculate a lot what that is. Despite the continued brutality, it really was, the, maybe really was the prospect of a more merciful, just and compassionate society. Yes, at some point converting to Christendom, Christendom had real benefits. What we know a whole lot of conversions in Roman antique era, which by all means are very genuinely out of face, like the often cited poster book conversion of St. Augustine, who had all in life but at some point questioned it. And of course there were many people suffering who didn't find any consolation in just worshipping the status quo gods. So yes, there was a lot of pressure and treachery in the spread of Christianity. But I dare say that Christianity never could have spread if it didn't hit a nerve in people back then. It can as well be mirrored, of course, if one asks why does it apparently stop speaking to people more and more. I would guess it is not much so much Christianity itself, but the churches whose backwater-oriented morality and focus on issues more and more people find of little relevancy, like, for instance, divorce or sexual morality, and the churches have little to say about pressing issues of our days, like governments are spying us on us or turbo capitalism. The message may still be in the book, but the churches mostly haven't been able to move people anymore in the issues they feel pressing in their lives and the big world, because they preach about stuff of lit little relevancy to people today, or because the preaching has become lukewarm and timid. The church has simply lost the revolutionary message. On the other hand, I must say, neither paganism nor Thelema really do any better in that aspect. On the contrary, while paganism and Thelema are great advocates of individual liberty and paganism on top of ecological awareness, which surely are both important topics, both have very little to say beyond those broad stances to the everyday life. Paganism is mostly a sort of live in harmony with nature feel good system these days. The real nature would teach some very harsh lessons because real nature is not just harmony. Life and feel good flower power and neither was paganism of old. The paganism pagans of old were very aware of the brutality, cruelty and harshness of nature. But how can we incorporate such a thing into everyday life or even into political and social concepts? 
Do we go back slaying unfit newborns as the Germanic people of old used to do? I mean, that would sure fight overpopulation, but pagans today tend to look a bit too much on the bright side of nature, and just as many Christians in Europe just uh, tr uh, prefer to read the nice passages of the Bible. With Selema, it is even more staggering. You see, I find the idea of the true self good and important. The message that everyone is individually holy, has the right to manifest himself and walk his own path is an important idea. But I never could shake the feeling it highlights one aspect of spiritual reality too much at the expense of other perspective. Because to be blunt, the everyday experience of my life and the lives of every other person I know does not prove that following the true will always leads to success. That simply is not true. While I am sure having an authentic inner self is a good message, basing a religion entirely and solely on that idea is something I feel is a great, great mistake. Maybe going over the top is the nature and necessity for any new message, especially in our days where there is a prophet and chosen one at every corner. But when I look sober and honest at the book of the law, on what it has to tell me about my everyday issues, on what perspective it offers to interpret the issues of the world, then the answer is, alas, very little. What can I do if the NSA spies on me? What does it tell me about corruption, about nepotism and oppressive imperialism, about warmongering nations, about violence towards minorities, about the destruction of ecosystems and dying animal species? And alas, the answer is close to nothing. The crucial test for me is simply this. What does a religion tell me about evil? You may find there's a weird question because today the very word evil is sort of banished from our language. Like we could banish evil by avoiding the word. Oh, there are just misunderstood people in it. Sorry, at the risk of being blunt, I find that bollocks. There is evil. There are people who oppress, harass, torture, rape and abuse. There is genocide and all sorts of horrors. Even not even not to their own benefit and use, but out of spite and sheer brutality. How do we deal with that, spi that spiritually? In Selemitic terms, if I fail, it was meant to be so, or I was dumb and did not know my true will. Those answers are profoundly frustrating and in the end are more cementation of the social status quo, if I look at it honestly. For if success is thy proof, does it not mean that the rich did right? And what does following the great goddess say about that? If I become unemployed, is this just a cycle of winter I have to endure? And at least the Asia, uh, through their stories, stand for something. If you, you read the Edda and the first verses, again, we come to book via the back door, it seems. What I just say is life is full of frustrations, failures, illness and issues on the personal level and more so in the world. There is evil we are confronted with, personal evil and global evil, and religions need to tell us about it. That is what I expect for as a spiritual answer. Don't get me wrong, I cannot go back to be a Christian again. I am on a path of my own spiritually and in terms of religion. I pray to the one light, the father of all and the earth and spirits. I no longer know what is right, so I pray to the one God and hope he, she, it will lead me. But I think for people not stumbling on a spiritual path, neither pagans nor Thelemites have real rights to look with hubris or contempt at Christendom, because no matter if you like their answers, at least they have answers about a whole lot of stuff. Maybe Thelema and Wicca have those answers about life one day, like how to handle old people or the question of pension, how, what value has the health system, how to deal with the sick and the needy. How is the stance toward wars and so forth? For now those answers are vague and some of them claim it is the best way to let the individual find it himself. But sorry, I find this a little bit strange for why would I even join one of those systems then? Just for the fancy of company, for the cool rituals? So if I look at our life in the modern world, neither the message just look at nature nor just follow your true will seem very exhaustive on the conditio humana. I'm not going to take a side here because I feel I'm on no side on this question. I simply wanted to give a perspective. In this world, the danger of pure materialism 
outweighs the da all other danger. For as I see a materialistic, nihilistic humanity could not stand the tests of time. So for me, the question is more which religion or religious system is the best to give humanity a practical guide on which one may be just there for a small elite of spiritual seekers and outsiders.